take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Welcome to Life in Red. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode 11 of the Life of Red podcast. And a uh, special friend here today who's a little bit nervous, so we're going to try to make her comfortable. Step up to the microphone, Jenna. Bonjour now. Ooh, that was quiet. You're going to have to step up a little closer. Bongiorno. <laughs> uh, how's that tattoo? What I didn't um, see it. She's real scabby. She's. I got it on Sunday. Mm. Um, it doesn't feel super great. No, that one hurt? Um, it wasn't so bad. Like It feels like pretty much every other tattoo I've had. But it's just healing weird. But that's fine. But yeah, was, I did get down there. That was really sore. The worst part is like the inside of your elbow. Like, we're up in the ditch. Yeah, that part that made me yet. almost cry. But other than that. I'm going to get a sleeve, though. We're gonna we're working on it. Yeah, same, though. That costs so much money. Oh, I know. It makes me sad. I have uh, another one booked in November. That's going to be a good chunk of change for, like, lower sleeve. But, lower sleeve? Yeah. Okay. Because it's what all the cool kids are doing these days. <laughs> uh, so, Jenna, you messaged me because I've been trying to get you on for a long time. And you said, I don't have anything to talk about. Then one day out of the blue, you're like, I finally have something to talk about. This is entirely true. I may have had an epiphany. An epiphany, a life-changing moment. Yes. It also might be a quarter-life crisis at this point because I did make a big life change and get a tattoo. And that's usually, <laughs> that's that's the defining difference. But it wasn't your first tattoo, so it doesn't count. No, but it is a defining difference that you make like a life-altering decision. And that's the difference between an epiphany and a quarter-life crisis. Oh. Crisis, you make rash decisions. Okay, Epiphany. this wasn't a rash decision. The tattoo was. No. The radio show was not. Okay. Or podcast. Podcast. Yes. Podcast. Pod- oh, my bad. Um. So, what was your epiphany? I, Basically, what? I have realized the ultimate life hack on how to be the most successful human oh. you can be. Oh. I know. It Here we like a go. Lot. It sounds like a lot, right? And Motivational speaker. So, as you know, like, I'm a personal trainer, so this is kind of what I do, like, all day is, like, motivate people. But in the past two weeks, I have been life coaching all of my clients as well on how to be more successful. And it basically starts with this video that I saw where they talk about, like, getting up at four in the morning. Mm. And, like, that's ridiculous. Nobody wants to get up at four in the morning. I guess maybe people that work in radio. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Not me. I don't but, do that. Regardless, there was no way I was ever going to wake up at four, but I figured something like more reasonable, like five or six would make a lot more sense. So the whole purpose behind waking up like butt crack of dawn is that you can get more done with your day, right? Makes sense. Like more hours in your day, like more hours to get stuff done. But it really starts. And I find like over the years, everybody tells you to make your bed as soon as you wake up because it makes you feel accomplished, makes you feel you've done something like kickstarts your day. But that actually starts the second you wake up. And if you can start that, like, success feeling with the second your alarm goes off, you got to win. And it's Mm. 5 o'clock in the morning. And I don't know about everybody else, but I like to win a lot. Everything I do is a competition. So when my alarm goes off at 5 in the morning, I literally named it, Do You Want to Win? So every morning my alarm goes off and it says out loud like the name of the alarm. So my phone asks me every morning if I want to win. And I'm like, hell yeah, I want to win. And I I turn my alarm off and I get out of bed. No, so your first alarm. Very first one. 5 a.m. goes off, you're up. Yeah, you don't hit snooze. You got to win. You got to get that first win. Got to be the first one. You can't procrastinate. So this is a a lifestyle or I guess a mindset Yeah, yeah. you've tried to instill in your life 100 percent. so i've completely like remodeled how i live my life because i'm usually like i'll stay up really late and then i'll just wake up really late if i can i'll only get up early if i need to and then i spend the whole day like running around trying to catch up and like that sucks um nobody likes to play catch up and it just gives you like more anxiety and i'm already riddled with it so i was just trying to figure out how i could like limit my anxiety and keep myself more organized So I figured if I get up earlier, I can get all my morning stuff done instead of rushing around trying to get stuff done before work. And it has proven to be the greatest thing I have ever done. Okay. So how long have you been doing this? This is two weeks in? This is two weeks in. Okay. Do you think it's sustainable that you can keep accomplishing this? 100%. 
Okay. Because it's all about momentum. Oh. Right? Was so this in the video? The momentum? I don't know. Okay. I'll I, I don't okay. really remember. I just remember that Continue. I was very inspired. Okay. Um, But it's like, it's momentum, right? So it starts with that first, like you get the ball rolling with like getting up first thing. And then like the rest of your day, you're like, well, I already like got up early. I might as well go to the gym. And then you're at the gym and you're like, oh, I'm already here. I might as well do cardio. And then the rest of the day, you're like, oh, I might as well eat well because I already went to the gym today. So why would I eat like garbage? And then your whole day, you just keep making good choices because you started your day with a good choice. So why at any other point would Mm. you make like a questionable one? And then because you did it on Monday, you might as well do it on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And it just like translates across your whole week. And then you're two weeks in and you're like, this is excellent. Like, why was I not doing this all along? Like, my life before was very disorganized. I was kind of just, like, willy-nilly all over the place. But at this point, like, I have my into- like my whole day is scheduled out. And, like, I know when I'm going to the gym. I know when I have to be at work. I know when I'm going home. And I know when I'm going to bed. So there's no question of, like, do I have time for this? Like, I don't make excuses when it comes to the gym anymore because I have it scheduled in. Like, I, I can't miss it. Like, it's there. So it's just straightforward. Like everything is just laid out, and it's all because I started waking up at <laughs> five in the morning. Um, you seem very excited and happy by this. I like it. I'm super into it. I tell all my <laughs> clients to do it. I'm like, all of you have a bedtime now. Every single one what of you. What time do you go to bed? Ten thirty. Ten o'clock. Ten thirty. Oh my god. Never any later. My phone alarm goes off at ten thirty. Tell me to go to bed. This is hilarious. So um, I do something similar, but it wasn't from a video. Okay. Uh, to to control my mental health. So, I mean, I just go to bed because I'm tired between 9 and 9.30. Mm-hmm. Like, that's when I go to bed. And then I wake up at 6. And then I spend the morning eating my breakfast, drinking coffee, yeah. uh, and I watch sports or the news or whatever. And then I start getting to work at 7, and then I'm here by 7.45. Yeah. Um, I think what you're talking about in a grander scheme is something I've – talked about numerous amount of times and I talk to people all the time is like self-discipline. Yes. I think like that's literally the key. It is uh, entirely to being successful. Yes. That goes across all walks of life is everything comes down to self-discipline and how badly you want something and what you're willing to do to get it. Right. Um, so like you have to have the self-discipline to come to the gym even when you don't want to. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of my clients and most people will ask you like, oh, how do you stay so motivated? And it's like, honestly, I'm not. I'm not that motivated. I don't want to be here, but I have to because I want something bigger than this. Mm -hmm. Like, especially with the gym, because it is such a hard, like, task to achieve when you have, like, big weight loss goals or big goals in general. Like, you have to be disciplined to get to the gym, to eat well, like, to make those right choices. You have to have the discipline. It can't be motivation because motivation comes and goes. Mm -hmm. Like, some days you see, like, a really good-looking fitness model, and you're like, hell yeah, I'm going to the gym because I want to look like her. And then other days you see a bag of chips, and you're like, that bag of chips looks real good, too. Mm -hmm. So bye-bye motivation. But it's the discipline that makes you go to the gym anyway. And that comes to, like, waking up, going to the gym, going to work, getting your stuff done. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't just wait to be motivated. Otherwise, you're going to be waiting forever. So, I mean, this isn't... I wouldn't. I don't want to say you had an epiphany before because I didn't know you, but mm-hmm. I mean, you had a pretty drastic lifestyle uh, shift before this, did you not? I did. Um, I to, so, are th- you comfortable talking about that? One hundred percent. Three years ago, I hit a whopping two hundred and twenty pounds <laughs> at the ripe old age of like twenty. <laughs> I had just finished college. I went to baking school, and I had quit every sport that I had ever played and loved. Um, And basically, I just started, like, sitting around on my butt. And then I, like, stepped on the scale one day, realized that I was headed down basically, like, death's road because obesity is just a wallop of problems. Like, I didn't want diabetes. I didn't want to have to worry about strokes and heart attacks and all of that. So I got a gym membership and then went to the gym. I was like, well, (laughs) what do I know? Like, I don't know anything about going to the gym. Um, and then I hired my personal trainer who I ended up staying with for two and a half years. And he was the greatest thing that ever happened to me because he taught me like not only how to work out, but like why I should be working out and how I can make it like a lifelong, like activity part of my life. Um, so over my time with him, I ended up losing 60 pounds 
And then since then, I've stayed about the same weight, but like my body recomp has totally changed. So I went from being like 35% body fat and my lowest was 22. Mm. And I kind of like fluctuate in between there depending on how much Lone Star I'm eating <laughs> <laughs> or how many donuts I feel like eating this week. Um but that was a little different because I had the accountability of a personal trainer. Um, this epiphany came all on my own with the help of YouTube. But now this is, like, now you're, I guess, in the shoes of your fitness trainer. I mean, like, you yeah. had the you had the initiative and he taught you the mm-hmm. way to go. But now you're it's kind of shifted where it's, you're the teachee rather than... Yes. Or you're the teacher rather than yeah. the student. It's... It's a, it's really easy as a trainer to just be like, do as I say, not as I do. And I was doing that for a really long time with my clients where they'll be like, oh, like you drink pizza or you drink pizza, you eat pizza, you drink beer, like you go out, party, have fun all the time. Like, why can't I do that? And I'm just like, ah, look at you, look at me, I can do whatever I want. But then like, I slowly realized like I was gaining weight again and I had kind of lost sight of the person I wanted to be. And then I reevaluated who I wanted to be. And then decided that, like, the person I wanted to be was never going to just happen. I had to chase after who I wanted to Mm -hmm. be. Like, I had to do something about it. It wasn't just going to happen to me magically one day. I'm not just going to wake up and be some, like, hot fitness trainer that has, like, a billion million Instagram followers and, like, Mm $100,000 deals and stuff. Like, that doesn't just happen. Is that what you want to be? It would be nice. (laughs) (laughs) It's not, like, my end goal. But it's like, it would be a perk, I guess. But I just realized what I wanted out of life and that like if that was actually what I wanted, it wasn't just going to happen and I had to do something about it. Because I've spent like the last year since I started working as a trainer, um, I got comfortable in the position and then I just kind of got comfortable doing whatever. And then a couple of weeks ago, I realized I wasn't doing anything really and I was just kind of letting life pass me by without actually doing anything constructive. And I just wanted to change that and be productive in, Mm -hmm. like, every way that I could be. And this waking up at 5 in the morning has changed my entire productivity. (laughs) And it's wild. So do you think, you know, it takes a certain personality type for this to be successful? Or, like, do you genuinely feel like anybody can do it? Like Susan, 40, with two kids. 100%. If Susan wakes up one morning and realizes that she wants more. I uh, had a really good conversation with one of my clients today because she was feeling very anxious about her future and everything. And um, we, like, sat down, and I was like, well, what do you want? And she's like, I don't, I don't know what I want. And I was like, what do you want out of life? Do you want three kids, a house, and a husband? Or do you want to travel the world? Or... Do you want to, like, be a public speaker and change lives? Like, what do you want out of life? And we buckled down, figured out, like, three big main goals, and then broke it down into basically, like, a five, three, one-year plan, Mm -hmm. and then something that she could do today for each of them. And that's basically, like, how you can figure out how to achieve, like, achieve your goals, right? Um, So say you want to be a millionaire. How do you be a millionaire? You save more money. How do you save more money and what can you do to save more money today? Well, I could go to Starbucks and I could buy $6 coffee or I can wait until I go home and make a 10 cent cup of coffee and I've just saved myself X dollars. Those are X dollars that are now going to go towards me being a millionaire if I stay disciplined and stop drinking that many coffees. Mm -hmm. So it's like these little things that you can do every day that you have to do to work towards like your bigger goals like if you want something you have to work at it every single day it's i i say that i'm like completely on the same wavelength as you because i say this literally all the time to to anybody to to people who you know i i manage at work like my my Mm -hmm. uh people on my like street team i'm like you know you want to get into media you want to get into radio like you gotta work and and it goes. It's not just your career; it's your life. Oh yeah. And you know, when I give uh, my talks for mental health, mm-hmm. I say the same thing. Mental health is a full time job, and you got to work. Oh, one hundred percent. It's not like you just take pills and then yeah. everything's good to go. You're like, all right. You can't sit there and like no. expect it to get better. And that was the other thing, like my anxiety, and I was like, I was really worried about my depression again because I was starting to have like non healthy thoughts, and I was just like, I do not want to fall back down there. How can I get control of my life? 
so that I don't go that way? And like, what are things that contribute to like positive mental health? And like, one of the things that contributes positively to your mental health is exercise and like exercising regularly. And it was something that was important to me and made me happy as it was. So it was like a double contribution by getting control of my physical activity. Mm -hmm. So like that aspect, like, it was a major boost. And the same thing with my client today. She's like, I already feel better just knowing that there's like these little things that I can do today to help combat like these bigger issues that I'm facing. Like she's worried about her grades. I'm like, okay, what can you do today to help fix her grades? And she's like, oh, like I could, I could email my professors to get a meeting set up, I guess, so that I can talk about like getting more help, blah, blah, blah. I was like, perfect. Let's do that right now. And she's like worried about a job. And it's like, okay, let's go on Indeed. All you have to do is hit apply. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, it's super easy, and it's something that doesn't take very long. It's a really minor task, so it's not overwhelming. And it's something that still makes you feel accomplished, so it's still positive. And then, like you said, there's the momentum where you do one little thing, you do another little thing, and you start to build upon. It's like almost like Lego. You start with one block, and then you just start building up the pieces. Yeah, and and then all of a sudden, you got a house, and you're like, I made that. Yeah. Yeah, and you feel way better about your life. You're like, everything is going to be okay. Well, eh, I don't know if I'll go that far yet. One day. But, um, I, no, I just, I'm such an advocate for what you're saying. Not necessarily mm-hmm. the getting up at 5 a.m., um, but just uh, in everything, I'm like personal mm-hmm. responsibility. Like, oh, yeah. The only one you really have. Like, yes, you have your family who oh, they yeah. love you unconditionally. You have your, your good friends. But I always say from the beat, like you're born to. Birth to death, it's just you. Yeah. I've said that my entire life, yeah. too. That's really funny. So, yeah. like. You got to take care of yourself. And oh, yeah. if you want, and you're so right, though, if you want something, you need to, you need to go after it. You need to get a plan. Yeah. You need to be prepared and you need to do everything you can or want and, and want to do. Oh, yeah. Get outside of your comfort zone. Um, push boundaries. Yeah. Like, don't take shit. Like, you know what I mean? And, and like, then, it sucks sometimes. Oh, yeah. Like, hell. it sucks a lot sometimes. Like, I am not a happy person on a stair climber for 30 minutes uh, in the morning. I am the most miserable human being. But by the time I get off that stair climber, I'm like, oh, hell yeah. Yeah, I did. I just crushed that, and I didn't break. I didn't quit. I didn't give up. I finished my workout. Like, I got, like, I burned those calories. I finished my cardio. Like, now I feel like I've finished my workout, and I can go home. Yeah, I, I'm i not a, like, I love the way the gym makes me feel, but, like, I still <laughs> wouldn't say I love exercise. That's fair. But I treat it like it's part of my work day. Like, it's my exactly. job. That's, it's... like, the way I put my mind in it. And now I can go five days a week. Exactly. Because it it almost becomes like, not like a chore or an errand, but it like it is like the same way that you would have to get groceries after work. You have to go to the gym after work. Like it's a part of your day. You have to do it. And that's something that like we try to like as trainers, we try to get every client to understand is that it needs to be a part of your routine for you to have long term lifetime success. But it comes with like control and taking control over your life. Mm -hmm. And like, like I said earlier, like not letting stuff happen to you but taking it. And like, that was the other thing um, that I listened to Jocko Willink. I listened. Oh yeah. 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 So, he's super, he gets up at 4am and he'll take a he picture does. of his watch while he work. he works out. Was that the video? Was it him? He, yeah. So he did a video with Casey Neistat um, and it was like ex Navy seal commander yeah. explains why I wake up at 4am. Um, and it's so funny because I've heard it so many times to like, just get up at that first alarm, just make your bed first thing, just do this, just do this. Never, never clicked. And then I hear this like ex Navy SEAL say it and I'm like, yes, this makes sense now. I understand. But then I started listening to his podcast, like reading his book and this like ownership and taking ownership of your entire life just makes sense now to the point where it's like everything, like you can't control everything that happens to you. But you can control how you react to it and what you get out of it. Exactly. So even if you get handed a crappy card, what are you going to do about it? Are you going to sit and cry? Or are you going to, like, boss up? You're going to win. Are you going to win? Yeah. And that's, like, the whole thing. I want to win. I want to be a winner in every aspect of life. Like, I just want to win all the time. I'm very competitive as it is. So if there's something that I can win, I'm going to win it. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not winnable, if I can at least be the best... I'm going to be the best. Like, might not win, but I'm at least going to be the best. <laughs> going to give 110% so everyone's still like, oh, she she's real close. But that's exactly it. Yeah, I've uh, my uncle uh, showed me on to uh, Jocko Winnick mm-hmm. and because I, I talk about stuff like this on Twitter all the time, and I relate it to my mental health. Like, yeah. it's, for me, it's like this type of stuff. Like, I need to do it to 
to not feel like shit. Yeah, basically. to like, like take care of yourself. Yeah, like like so I have all these things, and it's like it, this is my, like exercise is my mental health job. Mm-hmm. Uh, eating right, and then you know it feels good to get shit done. Oh yeah, like. I was just like I did the same kind of thing with this podcast, mm-hmm. right? I like was watching I was listening to a podcast and I heard Henry Rollins. Oh, I love him too. And he's just like I wanna be busy, like so I don't feel bad. And then he just is like Yes. Yeah. And yeah. then he's just like, Go for it. Just do it. Like yeah. fuck it. Who just do it? And then like the next day I'm sitting there in the gym, I'm like, I'm just gonna go fucking do it. And I just walked right across the hall here, walked into this studio, That's just sat way. down and just was like, I'm just gonna record myself start talking okay yeah that's literally like i started a blog last week because i've always wanted to start a blog and i was like i'm gonna do it and i was like i don't know i'm gonna blog about and i was like well i've been hiking a lot so let's make it about that i think you know i I work in commercial media Mm -hmm. and people they always say they want a theme um like you have to be consistent in your brand yeah yeah and i get that to an extent but i also like i Taking myself at a professional life and looking at it as a consumer, mm. I like variety. Oh, yeah. I love, like, having different opinions and listening to different people who I'd never heard about or, you know, Jocko Winnick talk or yeah, you know, yeah. whoever it is. Get a variety of these opinions and looks on life. And then I can go, oh, I like that. Yeah, or, yeah. Oh, like, I don't know what this person's talking about. Okay, I kind of yeah. see what they're getting at, but like not for me. But yeah, yeah. I get, like, for me, my motivation comes from people who are like, I'm getting shit done. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. I'm getting shit done. Like, that's how I... Yeah been since i was 20 it's a good way to look at it though and like i wanted my blog to be something that motivated myself and inspired other people so one of the things that i decided a couple of weeks ago that i wanted out of life was i wanted more adventure like i wanted to explore more i wanted to travel more so i started this blog that hopefully will eventually be like a travel blog but at this point it just has like Two tiny posts about, like, a couple of hiking trips I've done. But I really love accounts like Loki the Wolf Dog and, like, his owners. um, Because they basically just drive across the United States in their truck and camp with their dogs. I was like, that is the life. Like, like, how do I get that life? And, like, now all of my goals are, like, how can I do that? Like, how can I make that my reality? How can I have a job that gives me the flexibility to, like, travel afford a vehicle like have the time and space to have dogs and like sounds really lame but my entire future is based on is based on dogs and what you can do with them yeah like (laughs) i need a house big enough that has a big enough yard so i can let my dogs out (laughs) like i want to make sure i have a mud room for when my dogs are dirty (laughs) like everything is going to be about my dogs when i'm older and that's totally fine uh it's it's funny because i i think we're seeing a, a shift into this mindset uh, like that you're talking about because I went up to coffee with uh, my friend's mom and she's also my financial advisor and uh, she might be listening to this shout out Taz um, <laughs> but she was talking about um, how you know she, she's she been working for years now mm-hmm. and she's just kind of like I kind of want to just sell everything and live in a, like a an RV and just travel yeah. um, and you're seeing the shift from you know get a job get a family have yeah. some kids Buy get a house, house grow old, yeah. retire. And I and I get that. And if that's what you're into, totally cool. Yeah. But I think I think that's why a lot of people are are, are obese or are, are depressed. Yeah. Like they're a, a slave to the grind. And they're not necessarily all doing what they want to do. Yeah. It's what they've been told to do. And exactly. I think I don't I never care. If I work fourteen hours in a day in the office I never give a shit because I'm I'm doing something that I actually love. Oh, yeah. And of course there's there's stuff I don't want to deal with or there's stress and there's like, there's just the the daily crap with you know interacting mm-hmm. with other humans. But like I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm doing crazy things no, of and then not. I've been at the office since 7:30 this morning. <laughs> I went to the gym and then now I'm on a podcast. So I'm not going to get home till 8, yeah. 9. Uh and like That's I wouldn't fine. trade it, right? And yeah. then save up and I'll, I'll go on a trip again and I'll mm-hmm. just do the shit I want to do. Um, so like I think yeah. millennials and, and people like they just want more of a life. Yeah. I think we've realized that um, the standard dream does not have to be your dream. No. It's... Like the cookie cutter future does not have to be your future. Like you have options and if that's not what you want, you don't have to do it. And I think it's like what you 
are willing to live with and what your like living standards are. So some people are willing to live in an RV and then there's other people that will not live in anything less than like a three bedroom brand new townhouse. And that's, the, that's okay. If that's what you want out of life, that's okay. But you got to work for it. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's the biggest shock of being an adult is where oh. like you grow up and you think your parents, you know, they just go nine to five. You don't know what they do. Mm-mm. They get home, you have your house, you go to hockey, you go to whatever you do. And then all of a sudden you get out and you're like, oh my God. There's so many so, things to do. It's it's hard work to get this like yeah. type of house and lifestyle yeah. and put your kids through sports. And... and there's so many choices that you have no idea what you're doing, but you have to make that choice and you got to make it now. That's one of my favorite quotes uh, from someone um, who I respect and mm-hmm. mentors me is, no one knows what the hell they're doing. Oh, yeah. There's no blueprint. No. To this. To adulthood? Yeah. No. There's no right. It's uh, everyone just, you know, people who are successful. I mean, some people are more intelligent and yes. know more about some things. But really, there's no right way to do things. Oh, no. Not at all. It's just we're all just kind of winging it, right? Like, yeah. And some people are just happens. more confident than others. And then yeah. they tend to succeed because, you know, you're like, oh, this person seems like they know what they're doing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, most, like, humans are lemmings. They're just like, oh. Yeah. Oh, what is everyone oh. else doing? Yeah. Like, yeah. I think that's how everybody ends up in university. Easy. Yes. It's because when you're in high school and every single adult is telling you you need a post-secondary education and then you have to go to university and you're like, oh, oh well, like, I, what am I going to take? Everyone else is taking criminology. Guess I'll take criminology. I, yeah. And I mean, it's okay to take those majors. 100%. But a lot of people are doing it without a plan. Yeah, and then they get out of their program and they're like, well, I can't find a job in my field. And it's like, did you even want a job yeah. in your field? And <laughs> like, What I tell a lot of people, too, is, um, you know, when I went to university, I was a little bit older and mm-hmm. I was working on my career. And it's like, don't wait till you're done. Mm-mm. Like, start networking, like, first year. Hi, I'm a first year person. Uh, yeah. wondering if I gave you the tour of your lab or if you're bio, whatever you're yeah, doing. Yeah. Like, start making the connections and so many... I mean, and I, I tell when I, again, I talk to high school kids, mm-hmm. I'm like, look, go and have a good time. Get your 100%. experience. Uh, go in that sorority or fraternity, uh, you know, go out partying, go out drinking, sleep with that woman or man, like whatever. You it's need, part of life. Yeah. You need to do those things and you need to make mistakes so you learn. Yeah. So and you like, know what not to yeah, do. <laughs> and hopefully you're, you know, safe and everything like, mm-hmm. but go out and have a good time. And, oh, yeah. And then, you know, I, I would, and. You can have a good time simultaneously while you're building yourself professionally. Yeah, yeah. It's all about that self-discipline. It's really easy to go out drinking seven days a week in university. Oh, yeah. Um, but, like, that's a, that's an expensive drinking habit. Oh, believe me. I was I did not even go to university, but I started hanging out with sororities and frats last year. And my alcohol budget went through the roof. Yeah. By accident. <laughs> and then I was like, this might be, con- like... Along the lines of a drinking problem at this point. And I was like, I should probably slow down. And I'm not even in university. Good. Just just living the life vicariously. Well, yeah, that's exactly it. Because I didn't get to do that when I was in college or anything. So I just kind of went for it. And then, again, like, it's the same thing. I realized that it wasn't conducive to being productive. And then I stopped going out drinking every weekend. Mm. So now I'm saving more money. And I'm not hung over on the weekends, which means it doesn't suck when I go hiking. I was going to say, the last time we talked, which was only two months ago, uh, <clears throat> you were kind of saying, like, that's the stuff you enjoy doing and you like doing that. So that, like, you've kind of shifted away from that? 100%. Or... Really? Yeah. I told you that. Epiphany midlife crisis. Okay. I just, like, I didn't get to do it when I was young, so I thought it was a life that I wanted to live and then... Like I said, like I watched that video, listened to a podcast, read a book, and I was like, wait a minute, this does nothing for me. I was like, I've done it. Like, I've seen it. Like, it's, it's the mm-hmm. same thing every time. So-and-so makes out with so-and-so else. So-and-so goes home with so-and-so. Like, I end up puking somewhere. It's not fun. And, I, like, and then I'm hungover, miserable, and broke. And I'm like, this sucks. Spent a bunch of money. Like, and, it sucks. Yeah. Or I could go hiking, which cost me gas. And have a really good day and, like, spend time outside and spend mm-hmm. time with my friends and get some exercise in. And it's just considerably better. So if you, like, cut out drinking totally or just it's more, like, you you manage it more? Like, yeah, it's, it's more, more social. Manageable, yeah. And, huh. Yeah, like, parties and, like, that kind of stuff. Like, um, I know lots of people, like, I used to drink every day with dinner because um, that's what, like, my boyfriend at the time's family did. So I thought that was normal behavior. 
but I never did that growing up, and then, so I thought it was normal. Did it for a really long time, and I was like, man, it's real expensive to do this, too. Yeah, and so many extra calories. That's what and... I mean. That was the other thing. Like, when I started losing weight and tracking macros, I was like, uh, this beer is 400 calories. I could eat so much for that. <laughs> it's just not worth it. But that's pretty much where I'm at again now, is I just don't want to drink my calories. So I'm back to, like, just water, no coffee, no beer. No coffee? No coffee. I don't give that up. No. I'm still I like, a slave to coffee. I'm a latte girl. Can't do it. <laughs> Expensive tastes. Well, yeah, $6. <laughs> um, so, you know, as a personal trainer, mm-hmm. I'll touch on that a little bit. Um, why do you think so many people find it difficult to to make going to the gym a priority? Because it's hard. It's sweaty. It's not fun and it hurts. Like, if you went to work every day and someone was like, I'm going to hit you in the hand with a hammer 15 times, like, would you come to work? No. You'd be like, nah, you're going to hit me. Yeah. Like, there's no way. That's why people don't like going to the gym because it hurts. Because it makes you sweaty. People don't like being sweaty. Mm-hmm. Like, it's hard work, and people don't want to put in hard work. That's just, like... So true. People always want, like, the easy way out of stuff. That's why people, like, buying fat loss burners, like, those stupid, like, um, appetite suppressant lollipops. Like, if there's a pill for it, people will buy it. If it says, like, lose 15 pounds in three weeks, people will buy it. Waist trainers, people buy them. And it's because people are not willing to put in the work. Because, mm-hmm. like, they just... They don't want to hurt. They don't want to be sweaty. They don't want to be sore. And that's fine, but, like, you have to accept that, like, a reality of life is that a lot of things are going to suck, but they pay off. Yeah, the the good things are usually hard. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Like, you have to embrace the suck. And I literally say that to, like, almost all of my clients every day while they're doing whatever it is. They'll be like, oh, this sucks. I'm like, yeah, embrace it. (laughs) Yeah, just smile through it. Just swear a little bit. Literally. Like, you have... You have an hour with me, that's it. It's an hour of your day. Like, it's a very small percentage of your day. Suck it up for the next hour and then, like, bitch about it when you get home. I don't care. But for this next hour, you're sweating, you're going to get sore, and tomorrow you're also probably going to be sore, and I don't care. Because you're going to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, basically. You told me, you came in here, you told me you wanted to lose weight, you told me you wanted to get stronger. This is how you do it. Do you still want that, yes or no? If you say no, get out, you're wasting my time. Mm-hmm. Like... I could be working with a client that wants to be here. I do not care. Get out. <laughs> so you give the tough love. 100%. All of them get it. And, like, I'm pretty sure that's why I've maintained the clients that I have. Um, all of them are, like, begging me not to leave. They're like, please stay. Like, don't go. Don't move. Don't go to another location. And I'm like, ah, like I guess I'll stay for you because I know that if I give you to another trainer, you're not going to come. Like, these people, like, most people clients don't want their hand held like they Mm -hmm. need someone to like kick their ass and like tell them when they're being a little bitch (laughs) like it's true i train my district manager and she's wonderful and i love her hello nicole um but like she bitches so much and then every day she's like i'm sorry for bitching and i'm like i don't care that you bitch because you get your shit done i think yeah i was like you can complain all you want but as long as you're still working i don't care like, you can tell me that I'm being an asshole. You can tell me I'm being mean. You can threaten to key my car. I don't care. But as long as you do your work. <laughs> like, that's fine. <laughs> as long as you leave here sweaty and sore, that's fine. Like, that's all I want out of, like, that's all I want out of a client is just putting in the work. Mm-hmm. Right? So how do you keep that motivation up? Because I know, like, people come in with goals. You see it all the time. The start of the year, everyone's like, New Year's resolution. I'm going to go to the gym. And then a month after, they're like, nah, I'm just making excuses. Yeah, it's easy to be fat. It is. It's It's so so easy to be fat. fat. Like, I've been working out now. I'm going on three years. Congratulations. Consistently at the end of December. Um, And I'm nowhere where I thought I would be. Uh, Mm -hmm. I thought I'd be, like, ripped and jacked, jacked and yeah now that that's a combination of me not having enough money for a gym membership so i work out in the gym across the hall um so i don't have the heaviest weights and mm-hmm. I, I i do what i can but uh like damn it's hard to like but you make it weight. work see that's the difference between you and a lot of people you th- like you just said that you don't have access to like a commercial gym but you make it work you made no excuses you still get your butt into a gym oh yeah whereas i have Tons of clients that 
have a gym membership and will still blow me off and not come in. But you're willing to put in the work. Well, like you, I have I have goals. Exactly. I, there's, you know, I don't, I don't want to say it. I always joke that I want to take over the world, but I want my, my life to have some sort of meaning. You want it to be big. Yeah, like I don't want to just... I don't want to be just be average. Me either. That's uh, exactly I it. I want, like, I would love this podcast to be huge and I can make a bunch of money and yeah, yeah. help a bunch of people. You want to a... be Joe Rogan. Yeah, basically. <laughs> like, that guy. Everyone wants to be Joe Rogan. Yeah, that guy, like, totally inspired me with his his style. And, you know, there's, I don't agree with everything, but, like, no, I totally appreciate to. what he does because I've learned so much from so mm -hmm. many different guests and then me learning about them and then me go checking out their podcast. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, yeah. so I, I know going to the gym is. is yeah big for my mental health it's big you know i want to look good yeah yeah uh the re the, the main reason i wanted to start going to the gym is because i was like i was fat yeah yeah <laughs> I, I was like i was overweight and i was getting flabby yeah, yeah. and i was like like well no woman is gonna so i did it for selfish reasons but I was like, there it no, is no everyone woman. is yeah you ask anyone why they go to the gym what motivates them to go to the gym and they will beat around the bush the entire time and they're gonna say like nice things like oh i, I just want to be able to keep up with my kids and like i just want to be strong so like i can perform better at my job and like yeah that's all like fine and dandy but you're lying to me yeah. like that's that's your surface mm. underneath it all you either want to look good well you definitely the only reason people work out at the end of the day is they either want to look good or be strong, and the whole reason is to impress other people. Nobody yeah, does it entirely much. for themselves. They're doing it to impress other people. Whether you're trying to sleep with someone, whether you're trying to make someone else jealous, or whether you're just trying to be the strongest guy in the room, you are doing it for other people, yeah. and that's 100% okay, but you have to be able to admit that to yourself. Yeah, I did it because I didn't... I women uh i didn't want them to think i'm gross exactly like it's i have trouble enough as it is i was like then i'm gonna be fat and <laughs> now, it turns out when i was fat i actually had better luck dating that's a whole other story <laughs> well like i was in a relationship when i was big and i still wanted to lose weight because i was gonna be in a wedding and so i wasn't doing it for my boyfriend i wasn't doing it for men but i was doing it because i was going to have to stand in front of a hundred people and be the fat bridesmaid and I've seen every movie, I've seen every TV show, read every book, and there was no way in hell that I was going to be the mockery yeah. that is the fat bridesmaid. <laughs> I couldn't do it. I could not live with myself because I didn't want other people to think that I was fat. And that's fine. But you have to be able to admit that to yourself because that is ultimately what motivates you. To get yeah. your ass into the gym, even if it's just like that initial like Especially motivation. Especially at the beginning, yeah. Yeah, I that's all it... you need because it doesn't take very long to build self discipline. Um, a certain company will tell you that it takes one to four years to make something like the gym a habit to build that kind of self discipline. Oh really? I um, heard it's like uh, <clears throat> is it three weeks or something? I've it heard... depends what it is. So some things are twenty one days. Yeah. I cut out pop in twenty one days. That was really easy because it's something small. But because the gym is hard. Because it hurts. Um, it takes a lot longer, but it depends on how strong you are mentally when it comes to like self discipline and taking control of your mm -hmm. life. Um, like, I have lots of clients that don't want to be there, but like they're disciplined enough that they come seven days a week or whatever. Yeah, you just know you have to. And that's and the like, key. oh, I have to come in because I want to lose weight. Why do you want to lose weight? Because I want to be skinny for my wedding. Why do you want to be skinny for your wedding? Because everyone is going to be looking at me, judging Those me. Those pictures will be there the rest of your life. Literally. And it's like, so you're coming to the gym every day because next year you're going to have 200 people staring at you thinking you're either fat or you're hot. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> that's why you're in the gym seven days a week. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. And, you know, now I, I realize the benefits afterwards. Oh, yeah. That's fine, so too. now I don't really care. <clears throat> like, I, I now I do it for myself. I'm like. Mm -hmm. starting to look good and once you start seeing the changes you're like oh yeah i'm gonna go harder and yeah yeah and you love it there is i i have to say there is no better feeling than toughing out a workout 100 percent. like when you're just like yeah. like it, it sucks it hurts you're just like i Not in the I, mood. I don't feel it you're in yeah. the middle of it you're just like i don't have the same strength i don't have the same pop yeah. but you just you just get through it yeah. maybe it's not the best workout you don't burn it but you it's did not it. optimal but you did it and you're like I did that. Yeah. I still crushed it. Those yeah. are the best ones. Yeah. Never, not not a better feeling to yeah. me. So many people will be like, oh, like, I really don't feel like going to the gym today. It's like, okay, get up, get dressed, go to the gym, 
go for 15 minutes. If you still feel like crap after 15 minutes, go home. Mm-hmm. But odds are after those 15 minutes, you've probably broken a sweat and you're probably happy to be there. It's so true. Yeah. As soon as you get moving, you're like, oh, you might as well so stay. Um, that's usually what I tell people when they're like, oh, I just don't feel like going to the gym. And it's like, okay, so don't think about like going all the way to the gym, going all the way to a workout. All I want you to do is like get out of bed, put on your gym clothes. You're going to put on your gym clothes and you're going to be like, Oh, well, I'm already dressed. Might mm-hmm. as well go to the gym. And then you're sitting in your car and you're like, oh, I might as well might as well just go to the gym. Like, I'm already in my car. I'm already dressed. I'm already ready. And then you're in the parking lot of the gym. You're like, oh, I'm already here. Don't really want to be, but I'm here. Mm-hmm. And then you're walking in the gym. And you're like, well, here we are. Might as well be Now right. I got to work out. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're 15 minutes in and you're like, oh, I might as well stay the other hour. Yeah. And you just get it done because that's that self-discipline, right? Yeah. Um, I've never been a morning workout person. Like, I can do mm-hmm. it if needed. Like, there's, it helps. When I was going to uh, Disney World two years ago, um, I had to I had to get up at, like, the crack of stupid. Like, I was up at three, oh, yeah. in, three in the morning. Yeah. And while I was in Disney World, that, that's what time I had to get up. So that whole week, I was getting up early and then going to the gym. And that's, mm-hmm. like, the only time I've ever consistently did a morning workout. Did you like it? It's a lot harder <laughs> to get going. Um, okay. I have I mean, I, I knew I had more energy mm-hmm. uh, throughout the day. Yeah. Um, definitely felt that. But it, it's it's a lot harder to do that discipline yes. for me. I do it right after work. Like okay, between yeah. 4, 4.30. Okay. Like I go. I, like, that's yeah, my you, time you, to go. Yeah. You have to go right after work is what you do. Yeah. It's who you are as a human. Yeah. And then I get home and then I have my evening. I'm home by mm-hmm. like 5.36. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, morning workouts, like, I respect people can do them. And I, I did see a little bit of benefit, but mm-hmm. man, like, that, that, it's brutal. That it's not takes, fun. yeah, that takes a lot to yeah. get up and do that. You just got to do it. Like, because it just makes sense for, like, the way my life schedule works, because my work is so sporadic. Um, cause I usually have morning clients, big break during the day, and then, like, evening clients. So sometimes I won't work until nine o'clock. And then by the time 9 o'clock rolls around and it's like, oh, like, I'm not even going to get to the gym until, like, 9, 30, 10 anyway. Like, I should just go home. And I don't want to go to the gym that late. Like, I'm tired. I just want to go lie down. Mm-hmm. Um, so the only way I can get around that is by going in the morning. Because if at least if I go in the morning, I have no excuses for the rest of my day. Um, and that's, like, why I like to tell people to work out in the morning is because then if other things, like, roadblock your day... You still went to the gym. Yeah. So, like, after work, someone asks you to hang out. doesn't matter. You already went to the gym. Go hang out with your friend. Whereas, otherwise, somebody might ask you to hang out after work, and you're like, oh, God, go to the gym. And people yeah. are like, why do you always go to the gym? But, I fit it in. Like, yeah. it's, uh, I might, I'll, I'll modify things. Like, instead mm-hmm. of doing, like, an hour or an hour and a half, I'll do 40 minutes, 45 yeah, yeah. minutes. Yeah, but you still got to work at it, and you still won. Well, that that's it. Like, I still need to get it in. So, mm-hmm. like, you know, because I go at, like, 4, 4.30, then I can be done by, like, 6. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, yeah, let's hang out at 6.30. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's I'm... still a priority, so you make it happen. Exactly. Regardless. And that's another thing I tell people all the time. And for the majority of things, mm-hmm. you can find the time. Oh, yeah. It depends how bad you want it. Yeah. There's there's always time. You just everything. have to You just have to put it in appropriately. Mm-hmm. And even if it's – that's another thing. Like, some people think, you know – Oh, I can't work out for an hour today, so I'm just going to skip it. It's like, no, just go for, like, 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Yeah, it doesn't minutes, have like to be that long. Anything. And maybe just, like, work out harder instead of doing, like, a prolonged thing. Like, yeah, yeah. just run a little bit faster and tire yeah, yeah. yourself out, like, type thing. But, like, you yeah. can always, like, you can put it in there. You can make it work, yeah. One of my clients was telling me today, she's like, oh, like, I don't have time to work out after work and do a full workout, but I know that I have 20 minutes to come in and fit, like, fit in a 5K. I'm like, perfect. That's excellent. That's way more than most people do. You are winning. That's a win. Yeah. Like, you just have to make it a priority. It goes for everything, right? Like, if something is important enough to you, you make it happen. It goes for the gym. It goes for people. It goes for nutrition. Like, anything that you want bad enough, you make time for it. It's like when people talk about how they don't have time to spend time with, like, X person. And it's like, no, that person just doesn't matter that much to you. Yeah. Because I have like a good amount of friends and it's like i will make time to see them at some point if it kills me because i care about them yeah and it's like that's a little psa for anyone listening (laughs) if i have told you that we're gonna hang out soon and i still have not made plans there's a reason and it's because like you're not a priority to me so like there are certain people that are really important to me 
like Drop like Maddie, one hundred percent, like Maddie and Summer and like Awa, like my best friends. They're really important to me, so they get my like my number one time slot, right? Mm-hmm. So if somebody texts me and is like, oh, like I want to hang out on Thursday, it's like, oh, that's too bad. Like I I have plans with Summer. Sorry, and they're like, oh, I haven't seen you in three weeks. I'm like, sorry, I made plans with Summer. She's my number one. Yeah. Like she yeah. gets top priority. As you get older, there's tears. Yeah, one hundred percent. You have your you have core yeah. people that in your life. That are family. Yeah. It, it goes beyond. Exactly. Um, it goes beyond just being friends and hanging out, getting a cup of coffee. Like they're, like you need them in your life. Oh yeah, people make time for what they care about. Yeah, well, that's literally like everything. That's another like, okay, I, I only have half an hour, but I'll come see you for thirty minutes. We'll, we'll chat and then we'll go on or so. Again, that's, a, that's the yeah. same thing. Like, just because it can't be a long time doesn't mm-hmm. mean you can't do it. Like people yeah, always sell that out. And I hate and I've talked about it <laughs> so much. Like this this fucking excuse mentality we all have where it's somehow trendy and cool to be like, I'm tired, so I'm not gonna go out with my friends. Mm-hmm. Like you know, like birthday parties or yeah, like yeah. going away parties or like got like go. Like literally, you're not gonna just show up when you're old. You're not gonna remember the nights that you got plenty of sleep, right? I don't even remember where I read it. I'm sure it was like in a movie or something. But it's like you are not going to remember the nights you got plenty of sleep. But you are sure as hell gonna remember like dancing on a bar with your friends at four in the morning because you're trying to get kicked out. Mm-hmm. Like you remember that kind of shit. You don't remember sleeping and watching Halloween Town for the third yeah. time. Like yeah. you don't remember that kind of shit. Like live do yeah things. and i i get it and i know you get it too is like some people you uh, do the mental health thing mm-hmm. totally understand that to an extent um but at the same time I, mm-hmm. i'm a firm believer that like you need to you do need to make effort for people yeah of course like you can't just shut down as much as you want to um last year like last december i shut down i didn't go to work for three weeks everyone thought i died I literally laid in bed for three weeks and I wasn't even bathing as disgusting as it is because I wanted to shut down. Like I had just lost all will to do anything, to see any people, like cease communication with all of my friends. And then one day, like I woke up and I was like, wait a minute, like this is not how this works Mm -hmm. at all. Like if I want to get better, I have to get better. Mm -hmm. And so like I woke up on the Saturday morning cleaned my house, took a shower, and went out with my friends, despite the fact that I wanted nothing more than to lie in bed and wallow and weep. Mm -hmm. But I had to pick myself up because you have to. Mm -hmm. Like, it doesn't, the world does not stop turning because you are sad. Mm -hmm. Like, you have to do something about it. You have to try. I use the momentum thing that we were talking about. Like, I'm afraid if I stop, I won't get back going. Yes. Like, my, it won't start back up again. So, like, I just, I keep going. going. I like always go to the gym. I always go to work. Like, I, I always, like, just, I just keep going. I go see my family. Like, Mm -hmm. because if I stop and I'm just like, I'm just gonna lie in bed today and do nothing, then I'm not getting out. Yeah. And that terrifies me. Yeah, of course. Like, not seeing my friends for a long time really was probably what made the biggest impact. I was like. Oh, man, like, I care about these people. Mm -hmm. Like, I might not care about myself right now, but I care about these people, and I care about my relationship with those people. So I'm going to make the effort to, like, be a part of their lives. Like, do something about it. Because I don't want to just ghost all of my friends because I'm not feeling great. Yeah. Like, you can't just quit. Like, you got to make that effort, right? I, I Not to get too, like, dark, but... I always say that about why I haven't committed suicide. Oh, yeah, 100%. It's me too. Not for me. It's for the people who love me. Literally. Whenever I would have, like, suicidal thoughts, all I could think of, like, summer again. But, um, like, every time I think about it, I was every time it's just, like, summer would be devastated. Like, I'm sure other people would too, but I would not be able to, like, handle the thought of leaving her behind or having... Like, the idea of somebody calling her and her finding out mm-hmm. that I was gone, I cannot process that. And even thinking about it makes me want to cry. Yeah. Because I love her so much that I would just never want to put her through that. Like, more so than, like, my parents, my siblings. It's my friends that I know that, like, the rest of my life or the rest of their lives, like, they would never be the same. And, like, they would never be able to, like, function properly again yeah. without me and for leaving them the way that I did. And it's just like, there's no way I could do that. To the people that I love, like, 
Summer is, like, easily the person that, like, pulled me out of the whole thing because for Christmas last year, she, um, she bought me, like, a coloring book because she knew that, like, I used to love art and it used to be something that really, like, gave me drive. And she wrote in the, like, in the Christmas card, she was like, I hope this can help you start feeling like yourself and start feeling alive again. And that was, like, something that, like, really, like, triggered me to, like, do better for myself and to take better care of myself and, like, actually try to improve my mental health to, like, the best of my own abilities. And then it kind of just, like, tumbled from there and just got better because, like, Mm -hmm. momentum. But it's, like, if it weren't for, like, her being, like, you have things in life that are, like, valuable. You have people like you have things that you're passionate about and they're like there's something else that she wrote in it and she's like I know you're going to be okay because you still cry when you see a pretty sunset <laughs> which is entirely true but it's true she's like I know that like at the end of the day you're going to be okay because you still see love and life and beauty and things that like she's like I know you haven't completely given up she's like even when you are like rock bottom like you still cry when you see puppies like mm-hmm. There are still things in life that you love. Like, you might be, like, deepest, darkest pit of despair. But, like, every now and then, like, I'll still see you, like, crack a smile or something. And that's how I know that you're going to be okay. I was like, me. Shout out to Summer. Yeah, Summer's got it. Ride or die. She's the OG. And <laughs> The OG. Um, I wanted to, I, I know we went on this beautiful <laughs> path. Beautiful. Um. But I wanted to ask because, like, what's the optimal time mm-hmm. to work out? I definitely think it is the morning. Sorry, the time spent in the gym. Ah, uh, okay. Like, for a workout, if yeah. you're going to work out, what's like the optimal? It depends what you're trying to achieve. Um, there becomes a point where your body is over processed and like overworked, um, and that usually it depends what you're doing. But it usually starts to happen about an hour and a half. Um, if you're doing really intense cardio, depending on what you're trying to achieve. So if you're training for endurance, you could be looking at more than doing an hour of cardio. Mm -hmm. Like if you're trying to train for a marathon, you're going to be running for more than an hour. But if you're training for like fat loss and that kind of stuff, um, you kind of like peak at like 20, 30 minutes. And then after that, you kind of plateau in terms of like max, like effectiveness of your workout. So you'll burn, like, uh, calories at, like, whatever rate up until 20 or 30 minutes, and then it drops off. Like, you don't gain calories, obviously, but you're not burning as many, so you're almost wasting your time after a certain point. Oh, wow. It's just, like, less effective. Um, And then same with, like, weight training. After a certain point, your body is so fatigued that you're doing more harm than good. So usually it depends how hard you go, but, like, an hour, an hour and a half is, like, a sweet spot. Um, but again, like it depends on what you're doing. Like power lifters, like I know power lifters that will be in the gym for three hours because they have to do like all of their main lifts, make sure they're getting enough rest. And then they have to do like mobility, um, like pre and post workout. And then they have like accessory work as well. Right. So like, say you're training deadlifts. So you're probably going to spend like 20 minutes just warming up for deadlifts, making sure that like you have good mobility and you're like engaged properly. Um, and then you'll probably spend like an hour, hour and a half actually lifting, making like taking your rest times, loading, like all of that kind of stuff, actually working. Um, and then like your accessory lifts and all of that kind of stuff. So like deadlifts, for example, doing like hip thrusts, um, like stiff legged deadlifts, all of that kind of accessory that helps you build a bigger deadlift that could also take anywhere up to an hour. And then you gotta like stretch and cool down and everything after that. That's not even including like cardio and stuff. So there are some days that I've been in the gym doing a powerlifting workout where I've been in the gym for three and a half hours. Oh my. And it feels awful. And then there are other days where I go in, just do my cardio for 20 minutes, and I feel equally terrible. (laughs) Because cardio is not fun. But it, it, it depends what you're doing, depends what you're trying to achieve. It depends where, where you're happy as well, right? Yeah. Some people are happy to spend three and a half hours in a gym. Some they people don't have jobs. <laughs> I totally like never got that. Some people's jobs are powerlifting. How do they make money? 
you like you make money through like sponsorships and then winning competitions. Okay. Yeah, but most people have like really flexible side jobs, usually in like they're usually personal trainers. Yes, <laughs> they must be. <laughs> or like I know a lot of guys that do like construction and stuff just because it helps keeping mm. active. Um, like I know the guy that owns um, Six One Three Lift. Uh, Nick and he does construction on the side as well as owning the gym as well as competing. Um, so he's got a lot going on, but yeah. he still makes. But what well, helps that he owns a gym, but uh, he makes sure that he has time every day to actually like get in his workout. That's crazy. And it's like there are a lot of people busier than whoever is listening. You um, that still make time for the gym mm-hmm. because they want to because they want it right. Yeah, like. You don't have access to a regular gym, but you make it happen. I will. I I'm, will now. I'm going to hook you up. Yeah. I'm going to figure this out. Where should I go? I know I'm, I'm going to get one in January. I'm going to get they you one. They finally have enough money in my budget. I'm going to get you one. Where? I got you. Um, um, I get a corporate discount for good life. I can get you a month for free. Yeah. Tell no one. Shh. She's your hookup. Mm-hmm. Everybody go follow her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Legit, though. I can. I'm the doing, plugs are at the um, end. Jenna. Half price memberships until 2019. Jenna.taylor at com. <laughs> Use code Jenna for 10% off. I don't know. Oh, do you, have prom- be- you have promo codes? No. You should buy advertising for your weight, for your uh, thing for here. For PT give on the like, podcast? Yeah, give me like $40. No, I'm also poor. I'm very <laughs> lucky that I do not pay for my membership because I yeah. would not be able to afford it. I know a lot of people... Um, I wouldn't say a lot, but I know people who, who've worked here and they work in mm-hmm. a gym on the side just so they can get the free gym membership. 100%. You can volunteer at a gym and get a free membership. What you volunteer think? once a month. No. Honest to blog. To do what? Like work in like the daycare, work front desk. Yeah. Really? Volunteers get free memberships. That would be so worth it. Yeah. And pretty much every gym will do it. Really, eh? Yeah. Yeah, because then they have to, well. Yeah, because they don't have to pay you. They don't care. Yeah, but then you lose it money on the membership. doesn't cost them anything. They're not losing money, really. That's true. Like, you're not costing them money. One of my biggest stresses, like, I could have made a gym membership work. Mm-hmm. I didn't. I just, I, I knew I had the, the fallback. But, like, a, a turnoff is, like, how busy they are. And, like, I really mm. like my routine. Like, I don't want to have to sit and wait for someone to finish. Yes. I want to do, like this in a row because that's what i planned so it would like knock me off my groove see there's your perk to working out at the butt crack of dawn i thought that would be more busy it is negative percent busy when i go that early i go to one of the busiest locations in ottawa um full of meatheads and teenagers it's real annoying if you go like one o'clock or six seven those are the worst um but because i go at the butt crack of dawn there is no one there except other personal training clients, and that's because they have no choice. Really, eh? 100%. I have never had to fight for a squat rack. I've never had to fight for a bench, for a bar, for a machine. Mm. Because I go at the butt crack of dawn, there is no one there, and it is glorious. Hmm. I very much like the space. I thought of doing, um, like, two workouts a day, too, but, like... Mm-hmm. Doing do like light cardio, like swimming yep. or like a, a really a really light jog in the morning, like not going too hard and then doing an actual workout after work. Yeah, that's excellent. Is that like better for you? Would you be too fatigued? Like, No, what? not at all. I used to do three a days. What? I, oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to go first thing in the morning before work um, and I would do my low intensity steady state cardio. So stair climber for like 20 or 30 minutes and then I'd shower and everything, go straight to work. Um, then after work, I would come back to the gym, do my like weight and strength training and stuff, get all of that done, go home, eat dinner, whatever, whatever. And then I lived really close to the gym, so it was kind of nice. Um, and then after that, after I had my dinner, watched TV, hung out for a bit, I'd go back to the gym and do another 20 or 30 minutes of cardio and then go home. Would you say that's better? Like spacing it out, like doing I just 30 minutes on a or 30 to 40 mm-hmm. minutes each time or like doing an hour and a half like what you'd burn out after an hour and a half that's kind of yeah. why i was doing it like that is because i'm um, i also have a really short attention span um yeah, i'm surprised you've been going so long here so i can far. talk forever my <laughs> teachers in high school used to uh i'm gonna call it a compliment me 
and tell me that I never stopped talking <laughs> and that I was a distraction. <laughs> you never. Exactly. Um, but the short attention span thing um, helps keep me like active throughout the day, though. So like because I'm constantly bouncing around from one thing to another, going two or three times a day isn't really an issue for me mm. or it wasn't when I lived so close to the gym. Now I live further away, so I try to get it all done at once, but I also make sure that I allot myself enough time that I can um, get a little ADHD at the gym. Mm. Um, because I know so many people there, I'm bouncing around a lot, and Talking I'll be like, and... I'm going to do this, no, I'm going to do this, and now I'm going to do this, and it's just all over the place. So I don't <laughs> have time for that. i got to budget my time in the gym better. Uh... Um, do you know much about supplements and stuff like that? Because this is this is something I'm actually mm -hmm. curious about. Cause... I know some things. Do they work or are they a waste of time? Um, it depends what you're taking. Um, I'll, one of my favorite things to take is BCAAs, branched chain amino acids. Okay, that's, I'm taking some of that right now. I like them, and I found them to personally work um, in terms of um, post workout soreness. That when I was taking BCAAs compared to when I was not, um, I was not as sore the next day. Like, marginally better recovery. Um, and it also helped me drink more water because this was when I was not super into water. I hated it. I like pop. I like coffee. I like everything that is terrible for you. But Coffee's not bad. It is when you fill it full of cream and sugar. Well, I don't, so it's good. Um, but the BCAAs were helping me drink more water. Um, so that was another added benefit. But I found that they really help with soreness. Mm -hmm. But you'll hear tons of other people tell you that you are pissing out your money because your body can't process it. So BCAAs are broken down protein, basically. It's the amino acids that build up certain proteins. Um, and it's basically just like your body metabolizes them instantly as opposed to having to break down a protein into those amino acids so, in theory, when you work out, you're tearing muscle fiber. So, the idea is that when you're drinking BCAAs, your body is going to metabolize those amino acids instead of the ones from your muscles. That's the idea behind it. Whether or not that's actually true, nobody knows. I hate that there's so... There's not a lot of science behind it. Like, I want... Yes. It, it's always changing. because it's expensive. Yeah, they are expensive. Yeah. That's why I'm like, am I wasting my money on this stuff? Do you feel better after you take BCAs? I haven't. I don't know. Cycle not, off it. So not like, um, not terribly noticeable. Yeah, so I would try like cycling on and off stuff. Um, it's like when people do elimination diets and they cut out gluten for three weeks and they introduce it and they're like, ah, gluten's what makes me feel like garbage. Mm -hmm. You can try it like that. So like, take your BCAs like normal and then cut it out cold turkey. For like a week. And if you feel like garbage after your workouts that week, you know that it was because your BCAs. Don't change anything else. Don't change how you work out. Don't change like what time or anything. Just change that, like not taking BCAs. See how you feel. Because even if it, like, even if it turns out in like five years and they prove that it's fake and that it's fake news and doesn't work, who cares? For those five years that you've been working out, you felt better after your workouts when you had BCAAs. So like at it. placebo or not, you felt better. Mm -hmm. So was it worth it? Like, probably. Like it's it's worth not feeling like crap the mm -hmm. next day if you take them. What about uh, what else? I tried um, CLA for a while. Oh, you took a CLA powder. Yeah. No, I did uh, pills. Pill. Yeah. Yeah. CLA only works if you're already a low enough body fat percentage. Okay. I'm so for CLA to be effective, you already have to be like sub 20% body fat. Okay. Um, and it's basically just to cut out abs, but abs are made in the kitchen at the end of the day. You can work out as much as you want, but if you are either stressed or you eat like garbage and are bloated all the time, you'll never have abs. Um, so like all the pills in the world, they're not yeah. going to help you. That's the thing, right? Like I, I, Try to take it because I want to lose a little bit more fat. Mm -hmm. So I look at the things that are supposed to help mm -hmm. cut fat a little bit. Yeah. Like, uh, there's a lot of supplements in the bodybuilding industry. Um, I say supplements loosely because I'm talking about um, steroids. 
<laughs> so she takes steroids? No, but at, like, it, how bad do you want to be lean? Not that bad. <laughs> exactly. Um, so there's lots of other I like things. like my testicles. Yeah, and like normal hormone function probably. Yeah. That's... So there's a lot of um, uh, quote unquote supplements that you can take that will aid in like fat burning and stuff. Um, but again, those are for bodybuilders or for elite level athletes that are already like sub 15% body fat. Mm. And they only work because it is like the last drops of fat that like you wouldn't be able to get off otherwise because you're already eating like less than a thousand calories. You're already doing two hours of cardio a day. Like you're already killing yourself for this like contest or whatever. So that's the only reason they work is because you have nothing else naturally left to give. Mm-hmm. So like you have to take something that gives you that extra boost. So as like an average person, supplements? Depends. I don't recommend like Joe Blow start taking clenbuterol. No. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But like you can buy this kind of shit at Popeye's and at Supplement King. Like you walk in there and you ask for it, they'll sell it to you. Like they definitely have a guy. Um <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, in Mean Girls when she's talking about that protein bar and she's like, oh, it's illegal. And she's like, oh, ephedrine? You can buy ephedrine. Oh. Well, um, yeah. And it's sold as a decongestant, actually. Yeah. Hmm. So you can straight up buy it because it basically like boosts your metabolism. And a lot of people will take it in something called an ACE stack. So it's acetaminophen, caffeine, and ephedrine. Sounds really good for your heart, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so those three things together ramp up your metabolism and your heart rate so you feel like you're sweating and working out all day, and it's because your body thinks it is. So you can do it, but it is going to ruin your liver and kidneys, and it's going to hurt your heart long term. But people do it because it does make you lose weight because ephedrine also curbs your appetite. Mm. So if you can curb your appetite and burn more calories at rest and burn more calories during your workout, obviously you're going to see a difference. Mm-hmm. And it's completely legal. Like I have a Fedrin pill sitting in my freaking drawer at home. Damn. But, but I've never taken them because I don't want to have a fucking heart attack. You just look at them you're like, should I today? And I'm like, I could do it. I could totally do it. And then I'm like, eh, I'm just going to eat pizza for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, fine. Okay. Um, protein and stuff is great creatine all that kind of stuff i do uh vegan protein why i've heard it was better are you a vegan no then why are you taking a vegan protein i just heard it was better why i just heard it was better somebody literally just said it was better and they didn't give you a reason yeah well they said because uh whey and stuff is based off dairy 100 percent. does dairy bother you no okay then why are you taking a vegan protein i I heard it was just it would that's entirely fair they Um, just told me it would help get me skinnier like it would, it would. It has lower calories, yes. Yeah, it would help because uh, you get the same protein intake. And apparently, pea powder is really good for you. Pea protein is. Oh yeah, like, pea protein. It's pretty good, sure. But they're like nothing beats like a whey isolate. Um, just because of the like the quality of protein and like the way that your body processes it, right? Um, I was talking to somebody about this the other day, actually, about why I take such an expensive protein powder. Um, cause I buy New Zealand whey isolate. So the couple of like key differences here is that it's a New Zealand whey. So in New Zealand, they treat their cows better. Um, so you have a higher quality whey because the cow is happier, like happy cows create. Grass fed. And- yeah, exactly. They're like pasture raised, grass fed. They have better like slaughter standards. Like the animals are treated better. Happier animal, happier product. It mm-hmm. just makes for a better quality way, right? It's like when people talk about, like, trees growing better because people talk to them. Or, like, their plants in their garden growing I've better because they... That. Okay, That's, it's true. That is hilarious. <laughs> if you grow a plant at home and you speak nicely to it, they grow, I, they grow healthier. Well, I seem skeptical. I don't totally negate it because plants are fascinating. It's true. They also love Beyonce. <laughs> I know, it sounds like bullshit, but, like, it's true. If you play Beyonce for your plant, they grow healthier. Uh, oh, my God. Like, we need headphones to try this. on the side of a pot. Yeah, you'll get a happier plant. Anyway, happier cow, <laughs> higher quality protein, and because they have higher standards for their food as well, you're getting a higher quality protein in that sense as well. Um, and then I specifically take an isolate as opposed to, like, a compound because it gets processed faster by my body. So... um. Like, when you take a compounded protein, and they usually also have higher carbs, 
Um, but that's not really what I'm looking for, right? Like, I just want, like, straight protein so that it, like, goes straight into muscle building, right? So these are the proteins that you want to be taking, like, immediately post-workout. So the compounds are good for, like, all day. Like, if you're just looking for, like, a meal replacement, like, go ahead, drink an Ensure, drink a muscle milk, like, whatever. Um, it's great for, like, all day kind of stuff. But post-workout, if you're trying to get, like, tick and juicy... <laughs> You need to take an isolate because it gets processed faster because there's no added, like, fluff, Mm. basically. So your body can, like, straight go straight into metabolizing pure protein, right? See, I'm trying to do the opposite. I'm trying to reduce mass. You don't want to be thick? You want to be a thick boy? No. Get juicy? No, I want to be be leaner. You don't want big muscles? Well, I'm built big anyway. Like, I'm I'm, I'm a thicker human, right? Like, I have a big chest and... I don't have to do well, like, but uh, like I'm already yeah. big enough as I want to yeah, be. be lean. I want to yeah, be yeah. leaner because yeah, I don't like I don't like having a thick chest. Yeah, but still, it's still going to be like an isolate. Cause at the end of the day, like if you're trying to lean out, um, comes down to calories in versus calories out. You're taking compounded protein that has 300 calories as opposed to 120 calories of an isolate, and with your compound, you're getting like protein, fat, and carbs. So you're, like, using up more macros, whereas with, like, a protein isolate, you're probably just getting, like, almost exclusively protein, very little fat, and either no carbs or very few. So you have more of those macros to use for mm. the rest of your day. Um, but, like, when it comes to getting lean, like, <clears throat> it's, it's always going to come down to, like, calories in versus calories out. Like, yeah. it, it doesn't matter what else you do. It doesn't matter if you take CLA. It doesn't matter if you take Clen, Trend, Steroid. It doesn't matter. Like, if at the end of the day, you're still eating 3,000 calories over what you burn, you're never going to lose any weight. Yeah. It's like... It's hard, man. It's tell me so about it. It's so hard. Because uh, I, I, I want to have balance. Like, mm-hmm. if I don't go out of my way to eat healthy or eat unhealthy... Yeah. But if, like, someone's having pizza, I'm not going to be that person to be, like, no. oh, no, like, like I want to yeah, be yeah. able to enjoy a beer or have a pizza or yeah, of course. eat a burger, but I don't go out of my way and, like, go to McDonald's and order yes. a Big Mac. Well, that's the difference, right? And, like, you can't go ahead, eat pizza. I am really, I was 100% the kind of person that would eat an entire pizza because I could. Yeah. <laughs> but now I'm at the point where I'm going to eat pizza even though, like, I'm trying to eat better, but I'm only going to have, like, one slice. Oh, it's so sad and like, so hard. maybe two. But, I, like, I'm so used to it now that I don't want to eat a whole pizza anymore. And it doesn't... You'd notice to be, like, yeah. you feel gross. You, you, I literally feel like shit Yeah. after, like, more than one and a half pieces. I, I get to the, the end of my two, and I'm like, someone call a doctor. Yeah, I smell the pizza, like, on my skin. I think about it all the time. Oh, it's but like people think they're like motivated by like sex, whatever. I'm like, mm, nah. <laughs> you ever had pizza? <laughs> um, it's have, true. Have you ever tried like any of those uh, those diets out there? Like I know, no. Um, like keto is a big one. Oh no, I did that. I've seen people. There's a girl here at work who's had pretty great results with keto. Mm. Um, there's you know people. How was her? Um, um what's it called? cholesterol i don't know you should ask her i don't know if she checks that or if she gets blood tests done or highly recommend uh, checking your cholesterol if you're doing keto i did keto for a month and a half and was painfully miserable because i love potatoes um and i don't care what anyone says cauliflower is not a substitute for fuck all <laughs> <laughs> i do not care um but I did it for, like, quite a bit, and um, one of the other family members saw great success. He lost, like, 30 pounds in a month, and all of us were like, okay, you can go screw yourself. We're going to be here with our sad cauliflower crust pizza. Um, and he did great, and the rest of us were like, kind of like, what what the hell? Um, and that's the thing. Like, it works great for some people, and it works really great for men, um, but it doesn't usually give like long term success, especially because it doesn't. It's not really a diet that you can sustain over the rest of your whole life. Like odds are, you're not going to do keto for mm-hmm. your entire life. Most people do it for a couple of months, lose some weight, and then they come out of it and they're like, "I want to eat carbs again because I've lost the weight." 
Mm-hmm. And then you just gain it all back because you yeah. don't know how to actually portion control. Um, like you just, you were eating fewer calories because you weren't able to eat things like bread, which is very calorie dense, potatoes, calorie dense, right? Mm-hmm. Like all of those like carbs that people think of are super dense in calories. So it's not that like they did this like wonderful fad diet. It's that they accidentally created a caloric deficit mm-hmm. and people come mm-hmm. out of it. And like, what the fuck? But you just spent six months eating cheese, bacon, avocados and deep fried things because it's keto friendly. Yeah. And now your cholesterol through the fucking roof and you're going to have a heart attack. <laughs> but I feel great. I lost 30 pounds. Yeah. Oh, I mean, you did? If they're going to take steroids and shrink their balls, they're going to go keto. That's what I mean. Like lots of people do and it's fine and dandy. <clears throat> I did it. I hated it. I was miserable. I was like, there's no way I can do this forever. And it comes like the best diet that you can do is the one that you can sustain. That's yeah, that's true. Because yeah, I hated keto. I was miserable. I love cheese. I love bacon, love avocados. But holy fuck, would I give all of that up for a goddamn potato? Yeah. Wow. 100 (laughs) percent. Can't Um, handle it. Well, I know. And then some people claim uh you know going vegan and, mm-hmm. and eating clean or, or paleo is mm-hmm. is the answer but then same thing you're I, eating fewer calories by accident and i know you don't get a, a, all the vitamins that you're supposed to so you really have you to can. maintain that on mm-hmm. supplements like uh, b12 like mm-hmm. and stuff like that um i've heard people now like doing a uh, carnivore diet that's awful yeah that's how you have a heart attack yeah nothing but meat that's Terrible for and you. And apparently they're but seeing... But you, like, you can do it, but you have to be eating organ meat, too. Uh, they might be. I don't know. You I, have to. Didn't look that much into it, but... Uh, I wouldn't do it. That sounds awful. Yeah. But Again, Apparently, like, exist. one person said... Uh, it was... Um, she has, like, an autoimmune deficiency oh, okay. yeah, disorder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, like, all this stuff was going wrong with her. And apparently... The so carnivore... all she can eat. Well, no. Just apparently, like, she doesn't oh. know necessarily, but all she knows is, like, just eating meat has, like cured things yeah yeah that like doctors can figure out that could just be her that could be the yeah, diet I don't, I don't know but like i know like some people are yeah like proponents of that now i know there's fasting yeah which is always, intermittent fasting yeah it seem seem interesting to me because that was something where it's like you don't have to cut anything out yeah. you're just time restricted eating yeah yeah so i like intermittent fasting i've done that before and it works really well um as long as you're not a binge eater which i am yeah so am i <laughs> um so intermittent fasting is great because a lot of people will use it as a method to eat more shit during the day. Yeah. Because you have less time to eat calories, that means you can eat, like, your calories in, like, a denser period. Um, so, you like, you only have, like, eight hours to eat. You get home at the end of the day and you're like, man, I only got an hour left to eat, but I got to eat 1,200 calories right now. I'm going to eat a fucking Big Mac. Because you can. Because it fits your calories. Mm-hmm. Because you're doing intermittent fasting, me. So, like, sure, go ahead. Like, a lot of people like to use that as an excuse. Yeah. Um, intermittent fasting is great, though. I found that it um, just kind of made me a little bit crazy because I get hangry. Is that so, a thing? Hangry? I know. I know women use it. Mo- mostly women. Sorry if I like to no, be that's, offensive. That's accurate. Um, but like they use it as a I joke. For the trees. But does it actually happen? Hangry? Yeah. You've never been hangry. No, never. Oh, one hundred percent of the time. Every time I've been in an argument um, with a man, it <laughs> it is very easily solved by the question, "Do you want to get something to eat?" Oh well, yeah. Okay. Almost every time, the answer is yes. <laughs> I have never been so angry that I do not want to get food. But is are you arguing because you're angry because you're hungry? Yes. Like you actually physically feel angry and grumpy. It's well, it's not. It's like a byproduct. It's like I'm angry because I'm hungry. Okay, right? and then everything else just and then everything you just off. like yeah, it just spirals. Like, don't talk to me. I'm hangry, <laughs> kind of thing. Like, I'm about to Hulk out. I because... always thought it was kind of a joke. No, it's 100 percent true. Oh wow! Well, yeah. I know when I'm getting cranky, and I know that I'm cranky because I'm hungry. Like, I get cranky when I'm tired. Most people do. Yeah, that that's like the only it's time. Kind of the I, same thing. I physically feel I like I know I'm short. Yeah, yeah, and it's because you're tired. Yeah. I know I'm short because I'm hungry. <laughs> it happens. It's very real. So many people listening are like, "Yes, girl." And then there are other women that are like, "You're doing terrible things for feminism." <laughs> I'm like, uh, "Maybe." Uh, well, you know, feminism is a whole thing. Yeah, eh. I've made comments on it on here, and oh, I don't really? mean to be offensive. 
No, of course not. I, I believe in equality and everything, and it's great. Yeah, it depends on um, an individual person's definition of feminism, because there are a lot of people that interpret it as um, women rising above, and then there are people that view it as equality, um, and then there are people that just like to be shit disturbers, and that's fine. Like, I don't, I don't really care. Like you. Would you say you're a feminist? Um. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. I think, like, yes, in terms of, like, human rights, um, I'm not saying, like, women deserve extra things, special treatment, whatever, whatever. I just think that we deserve, like, fundamental human rights. (laughs) I mean, that's pretty basic. I I don't think that's a lot to ask. Yeah, but I mean, like, um, (laughs) I'm a feminist in terms of, like... Like, things that are happening in the States, for example, like, repealing, like, abortion laws and, like, that kind of stuff. As far as I'm concerned, if you do not have a uterus, it is none of your fucking business. (laughs) Like, you have no say in what I do with my body because you are a man. Yeah. (laughs) Go away. Devil's advocate, Mm -hmm. because I'm in the same wavelength. I don't have one, and it's it's none of my business with a woman if she chooses not to or to. I don't care. The one argument I, I think about is when we say we uh, had, you know, uh, I got you pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, I'm getting an abortion. I'm like, no, I really want the baby. No, I want a baby. Like, where does it fall, right? Um, That's the thing I I think think about. I think in that case, again, like, it's still not your body, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you have to hope that your partner, the person that you are, like, having a baby potentially with is a respectful enough human being that they care about your, like, feelings. Mm -hmm. And people use that argument a lot. But you have to assume that most people are rational. Like, the majority of people are rational human beings. It's just that irrational people and people... They're um, the loudest. They're the loudest, 100%. So you're getting that, like, loud 10% that's, like, screaming at you. They're like, eh, fuck you, I'm gonna have a baby anyway. Like, most people aren't like that. Um but, like, you just have to assume that people are, like, rational. Because most people, once they take it into account, like, they're either going to agree with you or they're, mm-hmm. for whatever reason, they're not. Um, but it's, like, it's our body as a woman, right? We're the ones whose lives are permanently changed. We cannot yeah. walk away from the fact that we mothered a child. Mm-hmm. Whereas, like, as a man, like, you can very easily, easily, loosely, walk away from it. Like, you have no physical attachment to that. Like, there's no physical evidence that you ever bore a child. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nobody would ever know that you had a kid. You could walk away and never see that child again, and nobody would ever know. Whereas, like, when you have a baby, like, when you are a mother and you carry a child, like, that stays with you for the rest of your life. Like, your body is permanently changed and emotionally, right? Just as women, we have a different connection with children, like... It's just completely different where Mm -hmm. you could say that you want a baby all you want. And at the end of the day, you could be like, this is hard. Never mind. And just pawn it back off. Mm -hmm. But like when it comes down to like a child should be wanted and to be able to be cared for. Like, I think if you're like not in a position to have a child for whatever reason, you shouldn't have to have that child. If you don't want one, that's fine. Like, obviously, somewhere along the line, something failed you. Whether it was, like, a lack of education, maybe birth control failed, for whatever reason, something failed you. Mm -hmm. And that's, like, out of your hands, and I think that you should have a choice after that, Mm -hmm. right? Like, it's not your fault that a condom broke, or, like, it's not your fault that whatever happened to you happened, but you shouldn't have to carry that with you for the rest of your life if you don't want to. Yeah. Like... Because it is, like, it's a huge thing. Like, you're looking at taking care of a human being. There's a lot on the A very expensive human being. And I've seen the system of which adoption works. Yeah, like, you have sisters, right? Brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah. We've all went through the system. Exactly. And it's a fucking mess. Exactly. Like, maybe I don't want to have to put a child through that. And, like, a lot of people will make the argument that it's not, like, your decision to make to, like... You don't get to decide whether or not someone wants to live. And it's like, okay, but do I really want to, like, give birth to a baby into the system who's going to be bounced around from foster home to foster home, potentially abused, and, like, never, like, maybe never finding a family, like, a permanent Mm -hmm. family? Like, that sounds awful. Like, I have friends that went through it, and they're like, like, I would not have wished this life. 
And it's like, of course, some people are just like happy to be alive. Like, that's great and fine mm-hmm. and dandy. But there are a lot of people that are in situations where it's not that nice. Or like maybe you live in like a really impoverished neighborhood where it is not safe to make maybe even just be a woman, let alone have a child. Like, what if you live in like the hood? <laughs> <laughs> what if what if you get shot up on the block, well, as Eminem I mean, would say? I mean, that's not a world to bring a child into. It's not really safe being a woman or a child, really, anyway. Yeah, like, to be honest. Or like, <clears throat> maybe you're in an abusive relationship and you're already being abused. Why would you want to bring a child into that situation as well? The 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 thing I always find interesting about this debate, and I'm going to just speak in plain general terms, mm-hmm. is I feel, and I don't have any stats, so I could be wrong. But the people who are out, uh, like the the protesters, mm-hmm. I hate that shit when I see it. Oh, especially in Ottawa, I'm like, that are you me. really? Are you? I'm gonna hit you with your own sign. And I hate when they have the kids when they bring their kids out to hold the signs. Yeah, I hate that too. Anyways, I digress. I feel because they're very conservative. Mm-hmm. Um, they might be religious, which would be a different case. But mm-hmm. when I look at conservatives, they feel that other people aren't their responsibility. And one of the big things is, you know, uh, you hear it all the time is like the welfare system and they don't yeah. want to pay for refugees and they don't want to yeah, pay yeah. for people on welfare for them. Are to you have... going to pay for me to have this baby? Yeah. Or you're going to give this baby up because you can't take care of it, which goes into the yeah. system, which gives them a pretty, I would say, high probability. I would have to look up the stat that they would yeah. end up in some situation oh, where they're 100%. depending on social assistance somewhere oh, yeah. that you don't want to pay for, but you wanted to have the the person yeah, have the exactly. baby to protect the life. Like, you don't care about, like, you don't care about, like, women. You don't care about babies. You care about your opinion. Yeah. That's what it comes down to. They're, they're trying to win. Yeah. That's what it is. You don't care about children. You don't care about babies. You don't care about women. You care about your opinion. Like, you do not care about a human being past their choice of whether or not they're keeping a baby. Yeah. The second they make that choice, you don't give a shit anymore. You don't care if that lady, like, almost dies giving birth to the baby that you made her have. You don't give a shit. No. Because you forced her to have that baby. Uh, Good for you. You won, right? It's like, even in Canada, in PEI, I think, you still weren't able to get an abortion in PEI. Really? You had to travel to a different province because they weren't available there. And that's fucking Canada. Like, the thing is, women will always get abortions. Always. This is like a feisty topic. Uh, (sighs) Women will always get abortions, but it's whether or not it's safe. Yes. 100%. Lots of, like, hundreds of thousands of women have died traveling to get unsafe abortions. In Ireland, you can go to prison for getting an abortion. You cannot get an abortion in Ireland. And if they find out that you traveled to another country and got an abortion and came back, you will go to jail. Really? For having an abortion. That's crazy. Yeah. And, like... People will always go about a way to get them. Like, a lot of women in Ireland were ordering, like, the pills online, which is extremely painful and unsafe. You can ruin your entire reproductive system. But for whatever reason, they felt that strongly about not having a child. And that's not a, yeah. oops, the condom broke mistake. That is not what that is at all. That they're putting their life in jeopardy to not yeah. have this child. You yeah. don't put your life in danger over a broken condom, right? Like, yeah. that's the thing. Like, people don't think about the extenuating circumstances. They just assume that people were irresponsible and had underage sex or unprotected sex for whatever reason. Well, it's just a lack of compassion for, for a lot of people. They yeah. think they're being compassionate and a good person mm-hmm. because they're standing up for the life of an unborn child. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pro life. But they they leave. There's, they just don't people don't. I, you said I have to assume people think rationally. Yeah, I think the opposite. <laughs> I think I I and it's a terrible thing to do. But I genuinely, when I meet new people, yeah, I assume you're you you don't think clearly, like crazy. yeah, or or that like you you stick yeah. to one side of the spectrum and like that's everything that you know and like yeah, you're left some people or, you're are very right. close minded. Um. And until you prove me wrong, I just assume that like that's the way you're going to yeah. be. Uh, it's cra- have you seen the I wanted the the documentary reversing Roe v Wade on Netflix? No. Oh my! <laughs> so I I it's uh, you know Roe v Wade right? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That the case. So um, it was when um, the Trump administration wanted to uh, defund 
Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And now with uh, Justice Kavanaugh uh, being nominated to the Supreme Court, everyone's really worried that now that it's a conservative uh, Mm -hmm. vote, that they're going to overturn this case to make abortion uh, illegal or up to the state or one of the two. So anyway, so they're going through this and they're talking about the history of abortion Mm -hmm. and doctors. And then they were talking, like, they interview people on the pro-life side. I couldn't finish. No. <laughs> they were pissing me off so bad. So bad, yeah. Like, they bombed abortion clinics. I know. What? Like, what? You're protecting people life. People that shoot up abortion clinics, all the, like, it happens. People forget that Planned Parenthood doesn't only do abortions. It's a very small percentage of what they do. The majority of what they're education. doing is education, like, um family hpv planning. testing yeah. family planning like testing for breast cancer they do so much more than abortions but people are so close-minded that they don't understand women's health as a whole and people there are so many people that view women as uteruses and not as human beings yeah. like you are a chicken carrying an egg yeah and just go do it and yeah it's like when people are like what women have rights and it's like <sighs> I mean, yes, compared to a hundred years ago, maybe we have. Yeah, we've done uh, milestones, but it's nowhere. Like mm-hmm. we're still dealing with this. Yeah, like and... you think if a man wanted to get a vasectomy, like people would be like, "Bomb the vasectomy!" Like, yeah, no, of course not. We'd be like, "Yeah, bro, yeah, you don't want to have kids Good for you." Yeah, like fuck your wife's opinion. What do you mean she wants to have two more? I like your bro. Uh, yeah, your bro accent. No, thank you. <laughs> I do what I can. It's Brad and Chad. Brad and Chad. Um, but it's true. Like, when women do a lot of different things, we get judged considerably more than men will. Like, even when you talk about, like, wage gaps and, like, that kind of stuff, it's like, oh, what do you mean? Like, w- women get paid the same as men. And it's like, women have a harder time getting into the workforce, but that is changing to be the complete opposite Whereas you'll find it very difficult to get a job in Canadian government as a straight white male now because they're so hard on the diversity that they've taken like a complete 180 and now they've gone the opposite direction. And it's things like that that make people unsupportive of feminism Mm -hmm. because it's kind of stepping backwards. But then there are things that are legitimately happening, like women being... um, like equally trained or whatever as men but we're still not getting the same wage for whatever reason Um, but there's always like circumstances whether i haven't been working in the field as long maybe i went to a different school doesn't have as much experience whatever whatever um there's always those like components to it but it's still like a a very true like a live thing that we're not getting paid yeah um you should listen to Jordan Peterson's argument mm-hmm. about this. It's very contentious. People uh, really don't agree with it. You um, heard it here first. <laughs> no, it's it's pretty mm-hmm. famous because this is what kind of made him a very polarizing figure. Because oh, okay. he disputes the wage gap. Oh. And it's interesting to think about. Um, I just try to think. Like, I don't know if it's true or not. Like, mm-hmm. I make what I make, and that's all I know, really. Yeah, it's right? really like, not appropriate to be discussing um, your uh, coworkers' yeah. salaries. <laughs> but he he brings up the point that like. The wage gap exists not based on mm-hmm. um, job to job. Like, so if we did the exact same job with the exact same, same experience, skills, same education, yeah, that we would be paid different because you're a man and a woman. Mm-hmm. It exists because of, like you said, some of those factors. Yeah. Um, men are, you know, less compassionate and more yeah. willing to be assholes. One hundred percent. You know what I mean? So, like, that's where he suggests the wage gap. Uh, exists and like I said I I don't know yeah I don't know no I agree to that to like an extent right like um, because women are a lot more emotional in general um, we work very differently right like we our workspaces are entirely different my mom works in uh, women's sector of corrections okay um, so my mom works in an office building and of course there are men that work with her And the jobs are totally different. Like, my mom's job is, like, very compassionate, like you said, very emotional. She has a lot of emotional ties to work, whereas the men are very, like, cut and dry, get business done, like, come to work, do their work, go home, Mm -hmm. whereas, like, the women are, like, they come home with it, they're very emotional, Um, they, like, they have, just have, like, different connections to it, but it's almost, it's not that they're not working as hard, but they're working very differently, and it takes them like, a different way to get a job done, whereas, like, a man That's is just going to, like, a man in general. People are going to get angry at me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
like typically like a man will just like get a job done whereas women are going to like be compassionate take a longer route like look at it from all sides like try to be a little bit more understanding and like we're not as like harsh with our decisions either right like we try to take into account other people's feelings before we do stuff um and especially when it comes to work like my mom is very considerate of how it'll affect other people when she makes decisions um whereas like her male counterparts are just like no this is what we're doing Mm -hmm. and she was like think of the children (laughs) (laughs) but it's true but like men are very like business and women are very people oriented it's very different um See, I I know men and women have biological mm-hmm. tendencies, but I really hate that we're we we're pit up against each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I mean, and I come at and I try to explain this that I come at it looking at it like a, as a straight white male. Mm-hmm. So people would be like, "Well, white privilege. You Boo. don't you don't know what it's like to yeah. be a woman or a minority." And yes, I mean that's fair. I don't. So, but like, like I don't. I don't see any of that stuff when I'm mm-hmm. in work. Like I, I always rely on the individual's character. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And are they going to get the job done? And I yeah. look at that in hiring. Like I don't care if you're a man or a woman, or like are you going to get the job done to the best mm-hmm. of ability? And I'm going to hire the best candidate. Yeah. Um. What I, I think we need to get to a point is where everyone is in the equal conversation to mm-hmm. be considered the best candidate. Yeah, that's true. Like I do have some problems, um, wrapping my head around you know. That now, yeah, like you said, like straight white men can't get jobs in the government anymore. Yeah. Um. I mean, <clears throat> I I would really love for it to just be like, who's going to get the job? Yeah, but they, like, done. you also have to have diversity because you need the opinions of a diverse. Yeah, group of I people. don't, and I don't. Dis- if everyone was a, mm-hmm. that's why I don't like <clears throat> like yeah like a government that is um a majority white male and. An old white male government. Um, I find that that is well, yeah, like bad. that is dangerous. That shit's not is gonna, literally happening. We're gonna go backwards. It's literally happening though. Yeah, like it's it's in a majority white male government, and they have no fucking clue what it's like to be a minority in any sense. Mm-hmm. They have no idea what it's like to be they a millennial. <laughs> they don't really care a whole lot about the future because they've had their time they're like they don't give a shit about the future they care about the next five years and where their pension's gonna go yeah and like how their retirement's looking they don't give a shit about millennials that don't want to use straws because they're trying to save the fucking turtles they don't and it's no like, they're driven they come from they don't care ideals. about abortions because they're not a woman yeah and because they're not having kids they're driven it can't happen to them they're driven by money and yeah. uh, they just have a different set of ideals yeah. and they um, don't care about immigration because they probably didn't have that much experience with immigrants when they were young yeah so they don't have that exposure to people of other cultures well you gotta look well i mean old like so boomers are a little bit different yeah but um you're looking at like people i don't know i would say who were born between 1966 Mm -hmm. to now they've had no i mean they kind of had the cold war and the cuban missile crisis but they've had they've had no real conflict yeah. yeah Right, and the yeah. '80s were beautiful for them, and they made yeah. a bunch of money. And Vietnam. The '90s, they bought their their houses for cheap, and now they ruin like, the economy. Yeah, like everything <laughs> kind of went well for them that they yeah. never had to deal with adversity, and, and now they just we're growing up in a more global view with the internet and yes. all the digital and, and so much exposure we, we to other cultures. Yeah, we appreciate travel, so we're yeah. sitting there exploring these opinions, and and I agree, you do need um, diversity of opinion mm. because if you have five people from the same town they're going to probably think mm-hmm. the exact same way for the most part 100%. but if you have a, a, a white man a white woman mm-hmm. um someone from uh ghana mm-hmm. an, an indigenous person mm-hmm. um a woman from uh asia yeah you know yeah I mean? different like, diversity i think the world would be a better place that way yes. because you can come to a common agreement of what's the best system yeah i think you can uh, find more common ground on uh human rights <laughs> yeah and we get into a sense where like our ways like the right way yes you know? especially as western culture where, yeah uh, like we know what's up yes when we are white white really, is right <laughs> all depressed yes a lot we're of miserable. us are fat. We're broke <laughs> our debts are out of control and um, uh, yeah <laughs> Like, but it's funny because like you look at other cultures and they're not like that, right? Like, no, some of it's it's so interesting that like 
people can live on to nothing. Like yeah. when I found out it was, what was it like? What do you mean you have a job and you didn't get a university yeah, degree I and think, you're not $60,000 in debt, yeah, but I, you have a career and a house? I think Shocking. it was like if you make over $20 a day or something, yeah. you're like in the 1%. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Yeah, because you're comparing it to countries where they're, if for only a dollar a day. Yeah. Right? Like those people have managed to live like – and you might even say, like, a lot of people would say that they're not living, quote unquote, well. But to them, they might be very well, well exactly. off. They What's might be well? They might be very happy just because they don't have a huge house, a dog, and three kids. <laughs> like, it doesn't necessarily mean they're unhappy. Exactly. Like, lots of people are broke and very happy. Like, and that's fine. It's just not your ideal. Yeah. But... I don't know. We just need other worldviews when it comes to literally anything. I think straight white men in government are dangerous. <laughs> I'm offended. I'm personally. No, offended. I agree. I, uh, I, because uh, like, I, like I'm a non-visible minority, right? Like nobody assumes that I am native because I don't look it because I'm very pale. Um, but I'm like fully native on my mom's side. Like my mom has status. I don't because I'm lazy. Um. <laughs> And, like, but I'm full English on my dad's side, and because I'm so PAO, people just assume that I don't know anything about, like, Native culture, and it's not a part of my life. But my grandfather went to a residential school, grew up on a reserve, and, like, the repercussions of that carry through your family. Um, It's literally been proven that it's, like, alcoholism is genetic, and so is addiction. So when you have alcoholism in your family, it's literally in your genes. Mm -hmm. Um, my My grandfather was an alcoholic up until, like, six years ago. Um, and that like carried through the way that he treated his children growing up, the way that they were raised and subsequently the way that I was raised. Right. So I'm still seeing like very real, um, like results of residential schools and it's 2018. Yeah. <laughs> like well, that's the last one closed in 1996 90... yeah. or something. Yeah. I'm going to, I want to ask one of uh, my new friends upstairs, um, from element, the new radio station. Mm-hmm. Uh, to come on and talk about that because yeah. I, I'm only learning a little, like bits and pieces of it as yeah, like yeah, it's crazy, as though. I meet people in the in the indigenous and Inuit communities yeah um, and just hearing some of the stories and I'm mm-hmm. like like as a person from a small town I had n- I didn't learn about it in school for one yeah they don't talk about it two like how it's white people it, look bad you yeah, don't talk about it how <laughs> bad it was it was awful oh my god um, I remember reading it. a book or with my mom when I was younger called muffins for granny, I think. Um, and it's literally about how, or muffins from granny, maybe about how, um, their grandmother was being fed so little in the residential school that she had to eat the wrappers, like the little cupcake liners off of a muffin because they, they weren't feeding them. And like, I know, my own grandfather uh, went through years of abuse and assault while he was at the school because, like, it is run by, like, priests mm-hmm. and nuns. And he was taken away from his family and everything, sent to the school. And that was, like, the reality for most children is because, like, their parents wouldn't be able to afford to send them to school. So why not let, like, the white man take them and give them an education? But then most of them come out of it and they're so traumatized by it that they end up addicts anyway Mm -hmm. and like he was a very high functioning um addict like he worked on the rigs he had a he had a job he ended up buying a house had like five six kids i don't know however many aunts and uncles i have there's a (laughs) lot okay um but like it wasn't easy for him growing up and like he only started dealing with his trauma from that a few years ago and he did it funny enough by finding the mormon church (laughs) really eh? yeah so he ended up joining a church and finding sobriety, and through that, he ended up ended up like dealing with his PTSD and everything. Oh! But it it literally took him like sixty years. It's crazy. And then like that's in t- my mom works in the women's sector of corrections, but she was specifically working with like Aboriginal sector. Um, so she was working in like healing lodges and that kind of stuff, so rehabilitation for Native women offenders, which is really interesting because even though that yes, they are offenders. The majority of the reason that they committed an offense was to take care of their family. So, like, yeah, there might be some women that, like, murder their husbands, but it's because their husbands were beating their children and threatening to kill them, so they had no choice. Mm -hmm. It was 
either like kill or be killed. <laughs> but like they they were put in a, a position where they had to protect their children and they had to protect their own lives. Well, how many are missing and unsolved? Yeah, exactly. Right? And like the reason like so many of them get into prostitution is because they don't have an education because they grew up on a reserve. So what other choices do you have for a career? That was my uh, my brother's mother. Yeah. Who went missing last April. That's and awful. And still hasn't been found or anything. Like, That's there's still mean. an open case. It's still a very real thing. And people are like, oh, like, the natives haven't had any problems since we gave them all smallpox. Like, ha ha. Yeah. Very funny. Like, the repercussions of, like, colonization is still very real and, like, still affects families today. Mm-hmm. Like, there are still thousands of people that live on reserves, and those reserves are considered third world. Because they don't have clean water. They don't have plumbing. They don't even have, like, regular access to food. Like, you ask people in, like, up north how they feel about spending $30 on a liter of milk. Have you seen? Oh, my God. The prices of orange juice is, like, $60. Yeah. That's ridiculous. My parents went up there uh, to visit my sister's family, Mm -hmm. and uh, they were showing me pictures, like... You wouldn't believe that it was Canada. No, yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, you'd be like, oh, that's got to be in, like, and Uganda. People are, like, so ignorant to the yeah. fact that this is still happening. Like, in your backyard. Yeah, people yeah. just go about the day, oh, Canada's great. Blah, blah, no, blah, no, blah. there are uh, reserves in Ontario that are yeah, like that. We got shit to do, and people aren't doing it. Yeah. And it's crazy. That's why when people are like, oh, why are we talking about reconciliation again? It's Because like, it needs, like... Yeah, that's... <laughs> we aren't having the conversation That's why clearly. we get education grants, right? Like... As, like, um, when you identify as, like, Native or Métis um, or Aboriginal, Inuit, um, like, you get education grants for a reason. It's so that we can climb out of poverty because, like, education is the key. Mm -hmm. Um, One way or another, like, education is the key. Um, I remember hearing that at, like, a lecture years ago about how, like, the best way to overcome, like, poverty is like basic education i'm not talking post-secondary education but a basic education Mm -hmm. so like these girls that are getting pregnant at like 14 15 16 because they're prostitutes is because they had no idea about basic sex education Mm -hmm. they had no clue so what would what what else would you expect from them they had no idea it goes for yeah indigenous like black communities in the states of course um and we do not make enough investment in education for anything for anybody like it's yeah. comes second wind yeah i have lots of people that come to me and they're like oh like why do you need like grants and bursaries so that you can go to post-secondary and it's like the people that are living on reserva- reservations i had a client that was from somewhere in labrador but it took her like four hours just to get to the nearest town for her to be able to fly anywhere else let alone get a post-secondary education mm-hmm. But because of those grants, she was able to afford to be able to go to another town to get a post-secondary education, to get out of a reserve, and to build a better life for herself from her, like, alcoholic, addictive mother. Mm -hmm. Like, it was the only opportunity that she had to leave that life and break the cycle. Like, it's a really sad reality, but it's, like, everything that my mom works for is to break the cycle. Mm -hmm of like poverty of addiction and like all of those things because it's so rampant in those communities like in canada it's mostly like aboriginal communities but like in the states like it is like black communities right and then in mexico like it's the same thing Mm -hmm. like you leave a resort and it's the same shit yeah well i went up to thunder bay for a wedding and uh we were walking through uh some woods by the hotel and like it was just bottles of cough syrup this is what I mean. Like, and I always thought, like, I, I figured it happened. Yeah, you, but like, it's like a joke, right? Like, it doesn't happen that often. But like, like, haha. Oh my! Like, literally, like, I could not, yeah. not, not step on one. It yeah. was ridiculous. It's a really sad reality. Yeah, it's like you don't think that it happens in Canada, but it's like that's a lack of education on our part. And yeah, I remember absolutely. reading the other day about how they're changing the wording in textbooks about like how colonization happened i spoke to somebody a couple of weeks ago that believes that colonizers did not in fact give the native americans smallpox despite numerous records i was like you might be the dumbest bitch i have ever met <laughs> i mean with the internet 
there is not an excuse to not know things because no. you can Google it of and course. look at several sources. <laughs> and did Colin and I, oh, yeah, ooh, yeah. Peer oh, yeah, this journals, happened. journals, like, <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. This happened a lot. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, well, listen, um, it's almost been two hours. Unreal. And you've been up since 5 a.m. This is wild. I'm wired. Goes by quick, eh? Yeah. And you're worried I have nothing to talk about. I told you, I can talk. Two hours. I talk a lot. Um, Jenna, where can people find you? Where can they find your blog? How can they get in touch with you to book personal training? Um, you can do pretty much everything through my Instagram, jkathleen.img. We'll throw um, a link up for that. Don't you worry, folks. Yeah. I pretty much, I usually respond to DMs, um, but no. my email address is up there for PT. And then my blog is still a secret. <gasps> because First it, world release right here, folks. Yeah. Um, I'll probably post something about it in the next couple of coming days when I figure out what I'm actually going to write about this week. <laughs> but we'll oh, get there. It's hard. It's I get coming. it, man. Trying to find people to come on the podcast and find time mm-hmm. outside of everything else I have going on. Yeah. It's hard, but you make it work, and I know it's not... Because you te- want it. Yeah, it's not textbook. Like, people are like, yeah. you got to post content every day. It's like, you know what? I'm just going to do this because I enjoy it. I hope yeah. it goes well. Well fuck what can you do you want it chase after your dreams thanks for coming on thanks for having me bye everybody bye you take the red pill you stay in wonderland and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes